So, uh, we already see what is biomechanics. Now, I would like to introduce a, a, diff a different concept. Frequently, we have to face that we have normal patient or patient who has been underwent uh, to refractive surgery with all the preliminary examination looks to be absolutely normal that develop uh, ectasia at long term not immediate, 10 years after, and everything seems to be normal. On the other hand, we have patients that we see in our practice, and you can see the pre-op uh, maps that show some risk and do not develop anything. So we have something missing. And the new theory was developed by Cinzia that keratoconic corneas has a pathological decrease in the biomechanical properties that is focal, is not homogeneous. So the, we have a weaker area uh, to the, uh, um, the resistance to the stress, and we have surrounding area more stronger. So when you apply any force like the, the interocular pressure, progressive, the weak area becomes more steep in the first stage and then more ectasic. So this focal reduction in elastic modules generate greater deformation for the same load only in a small area. So the theory is that we have healthy eyes, then we start to have patient with a change in elastic module. When we have the increased st stress strain, that uh, redistribute the stress, increase the curvature, redistribution of the stress, and that progressive change something. Change the elasticity, change the biomechanics of the cornea. That has been shown before in the presentation. Later, you start to see something in the tomography. In the tomography, you can start to see something in the posterior elevation, for example. You can start to see some thinning. Only much later, you can start to see something in the topography. First of all, because the epithelium compensates the curvature change in the very early stages. So you cannot see immediately curvature changes. And finally, you can see this little lamp or even at looking at your patient. So the real issue is to be able to detect those conditions much before. If we are able to make a diagnosis of the risk of ectasia in a biomechanical stage, that becomes evident how is the benefit, because we can avoid to treat risky patients, or we can start to cross-link risky patients where they have no high order aberration. Having normality values is very important to create indexes to separate normal from ectatic patients, but we want an easier life. So to further increase this, the corvus capability to separate the normality patient from pathological one, we develop a corneal biomechanical index, CBI. This is in press on the journal refractive surgery, already accepted, is open access, so you can download for free. How we created it, we got 658 patients were included in a multicentric study. Patients were enrolled in two clinics located in different continents to be able to, to test the capability of the separation of these corneal biomechanical indexes to separate healthy eyes from keratoconic eyes. One was located in Europe, in Milano, and the second one in Rio de Janeiro at the the uh, Brazil study group of Renato Ambrosio. Logistic regression was employed to determine optimal combination uh, of the parameters so that which are the most predicting factors in the uh, analysis of the corvus who is be able to separate. One data set was used for the training and the second one for validation and avoiding exclude overfitting. It includes the deformation amplitude ratio at one and two millimeters. So it measure how much the total corner deformed and how much is 
the deformation at one millimeter, two millimeter in comparison to the remaining one. The aplanation one, the first aplanation velocity, the standard deviation of deformation amplitude at the highest concavity, the Ambrosio relational thickness of the horizontal profile, and the novel stiffness parameter of Cinzia Robert, that is SPA st stay for stiffness parameter, A is aplanation, the first one aplanation. This is the curve of training data set. So this is the training data set was 98% was correctly classified. The sensitivity uh, was uh, 94%. The specificity was 98.2%. That is the training data set. The validation data set was even better, and that explained because 98.8 .8 correctly classified sensitivity 100, specificity, specificity 9.4%. That means that there is no overfitting and it's very sensitive. In conclusion, to our knowledge, this is the first time that an index based on biomechanics has been able to produce such an efficient separation in a non-invasive way. But what about very difficult cases? From Frust Keratoconus, or the case where apparently everything is normal. We recently evaluate more than 100 from Frust Keratoconus defined from normal fellow eyes, both topographically and tomographically, of unilateral keratoconus. Many of those shows an abnormal CBI, while the other examined were normal. Clinical example. Here we have the first one. This is a right eye. You can see the four maps, and you can see the curvature value is normal, the elevation, the, the front elevation normal, the posterior elevation is normal. You see only seven micron. The pachymetry is normal. Everything, all the, the values that you can read here is normal. But if you go to the Berlin Ambrosio, Data set, even this, everything is normal. You see no values show any offset. Everything is green. That tells you that you can be safe. But the corner biomechanical index showed to us the corner CBI that is incomplete in the red position. So very risky cases. Because the, the index, the Cinzia Robert index, the stiffness parameter is out and we have uh, the fitting all the other uh, parameters together show a risk. You can tell, okay, Paolo, this is a good example. We have a normal value. How you can tell that this is a real keratoconic, a risky patient? This is the fellow eye. So the very important point that these eyes, the left one, at some times has been like this. Many years ago, in the worst early stages is in the same phase than this. So the real point is to pick up these cases much more, much earlier that you have a risky condition. Because now, of course, it's very easy. The Benin Ambrosio tell you that it's risky, and of course, everything is out. But you want to say, and you want to know before. On the other hand, we have good news. Because we have risky patients on sometimes the belly in Ambrosio, because, for example, I see one last week. The patient has a very sick cornea, 625, with normal endothelium. But the rate of growth from the pachymetry from the center to the periphery was not normal because it starts from a very sick one. So in the index, uh, is a steep cornea, was a steep cornea because of the pachymetry. So many indexes, the Kleist indexes, and everything was risky. But the corneal biomechanical index show absolutely normal. And that is very, uh, tell, make us much more confident in making choices. Or we have other patients where we have the opposite. We have absolutely normal cases where only the corneal biomechanical index is abnormal. And after this, we ask and we discover that the brother or the sister has the keratoconic. So it's very important to have this, I think, to have a double 
safety because corner biomechanical is for keratoconus is able to diagnose is shown to be very high sensitive and specific alone to separate healthy from ectatic patient. And corner biomechanical index can be an additional lab to diagnose ectasia at a stage where tomography and topography are absolutely normal. Thank you.